real bad things. This is a list of a couple of things that could happen that would just be devastating. For many of you guys don't know, this is a, a I can't even pronounce it, Abi Cake, Saudi Arabia. It's actually right off of the, the largest uh, oil supply in the world, Gwar, and it's the uh, actual processing station for many of the uh, Saudi Arabia's biggest fields, and it's kind of like this joint crossroads where all these oil pipelines go and where they get processed. There was actually a threat of a terrorist attack probably back in 2007 or 2006 on that facility. But if there was one bomb that went off there, uh, oil prices would probably double overnight because it's that vitally important for the uh, for the world's economy for oil. The Saudi royals, I mean, this is a very tenuous political situation that are, are, are there. They're not loved by their people. It's a very repressive government. There's a huge income disparity between the royal family and, and the rest of the people there. There's a large immigrant population that's been brought up there through to building all these infrastructure. And if that, again, that, that's our main access to oil in the world. If Iran is attacked, it, you know, the, our, Israel's been beating the war drums for years on attacking, on attacking Iran. But I tell you what, if, I, you, know, if you thought that the World War I caught fire quickly... Uh, after Archduke Ferdinand was shot, watch the powers that come to defend Iran because I don't think that they're going to let the United States run the run the table in the Middle East. Russia would certainly join in the fix. China would probably uh, use that as an, an opportunity to uh, uh, maybe apply economic pressure on it. The Strait of Hormuz is shut. That's where uh, I think third third of the world's oil production goes through the Persian Gulf. In the Strait of Hormuz, it's only a I think a 14 mile wide opening that ships can pass through It'd be very easy for them to shut that down nuclear pakistan collapsing we supplied all the uh, nuclear armament for pakistan um, and if uh, that government fell apart and those missiles went missing it would be a very dangerous situation how about mexico failing as a state i mean there's huge drug wars that are going on down there so much so that the, uh, the it looks as if the drug gangs are much more powerful than their government and in, in the in the local governments that they have down here. This is a definite. Canaral, which is Mexico's largest oil producing field, stops exporting. I think we're probably within a year or two of Mexico not exporting oil to us. And when that happens, there goes probably one of our largest you know supplies of oil that's easily transportable, gone, absolute certainty within a year or two, uh, that's definitely going to uh, stop happening. If OPEC drops the dollar, there goes the last, I mean, that's like, that's all that we have is the ability for us to buy oil with, with our dollars. Russia has already done this, cut off natural gas to Europe. Eastern Europe really does not energy independent, you know, as much as the Germans and the French have nuclear power plants, they definitely don't have their own natural gas or oil fields available to them. Greece came very close to defaulting on its debt. Most likely they just bought some time, uh, like Iceland. They're just hiding the debt, refinancing the debt, but there are weak states in uh, in the EU that will uh, be the Achilles heel of that, uh, of that unit. China gains full naval military capability. I think that China China has been actually very wise not to uh, provoke a, an arms race, uh, necessarily going, uh, you know, battleship for battleship and aircraft carrier for aircraft carrier. Uh, what they focus their attention on is destabilizing our military capability. Like they use satellite shooting satellites down. They tested a, t a technology there. They spent a lot of time with cyber warfare because they know uh, a military they can't talk to each other is a military that doesn't work. Their positioning with monetary policy. China is actually very brilliantly uh, looking for ways to counter our incredible military force. If China moves on to Taiwan or the Straits of Malacca, the Straits of Malacca is just as important as the Strait of Hormuz is in transporting goods and products around Asia, which is a huge market for the world. Or if China faces a degree of chaos internally, here you have a huge wealth disparity, poor population, and that they're starting to you know, become awakened, they may revolt against their, their political freedoms that they don't have. And here at home, 
you know, as much as Greece and Spain and Ireland and, you know, Italy are uh, problems to the EU, we have our own versions. You know, California, Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, Florida. You know, all these states are in incredible bad budget situations. You know, they're always within months of, of, you know, defaulting on their debt, and yet they get these refinancings that go through. But those could lead to the default of the dollar. Credit crisis relapse, we're definitely, I definitely believe that we're not through this, that the, uh, you know, the economy took a severe drop from October 2008 into uh, 2010. We've had a little bit of a, a breather here, but uh, all, to me, all I see is another uh, road down. And this time, this next trip down could result in the, the dollar default. And, you know, we've, we've basically blown through all the safety barriers that we had, and we just slowed down the car, but there's another, another trip down the hill that, that can go. United States supply chain can suddenly suffer disruptions. Uh, our whole Walmart just-in-time production system with our food and our, our gas and our oil, while it's really good for capital flows and, and profits, there leaves very little room for error. Fannie Mae is revealed as a slush fund for toxic bond haven and the object of a grand criminal investigation. There's a lot of dirty dealings going on with Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. You know, all it takes is one of these crises to start tipping all these other into uh, into action. Uh, the real story of 9-11 comes out. If, if that actually came out where we actually had you know, some real whistleblowers of people who were involved, started pointing fingers if there really was a real investigation that took this seriously. 9-11 is, is definitely a, an Achilles heel for all of this because if that comes out, uh, the Japanese uh, prime minister recently uh, came out and said that it was 9-11 uh, was a complete lie. I've seen Chinese military officials talk about it. And Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, you know, obviously came out about, about that. But th this will, the 9-11 story, I could definitely see within another couple of years it just becoming reality. People just accept it for what it is without even looking at it because they know that this has taken on a, a, a life of its own. Talks swirl about limiting some central banks. You know, there's Ron Paul's movement has his movement called "End the Fed." If we actually get rid of the Federal Reserve, that would, you know, it would be a, it would be a tough year. But quite honestly, if we were to go back to you know honest money, that would probably be the best thing that we could do. Food prices soar in the United States. UK government su suffers a debt downgrade. That could definitely happen, if not uh, already. JP Morgan is the object of persistent rumors of a gigantic credit derivative losses. They have literally quadrillions of derivatives that they have. The COMEX, uh, which handles all the commodities uh, futures exchange, that could shut down through uh, all the uh, sh uh, massive shorts that they've uh, put into the market, especially holding down the price of silver. Any one of these could tip many others of these into, into motion. And you could literally see in a month or two more history done than the past 30 years of history. You know, if, a, if the Federal Reserve falls and, and troops have to come home because there's no funding and food prices go up and then, you know, we can't buy oil for our dollars and you know, our military doesn't work and then China moves on to Taiwan and, you know, Russia moves and, you know, all these things could easily happen. But they don't because right now we're still, we still have the, the illusion that we're still in control. But as soon as that, uh, you know, as soon as that teacher's away, the kids will play. And that's what's going to happen. You're going to have a mad rush for everybody, you know, who's been plotting for the last couple of years to, uh, you know, make their move. Bottom line is, after all these bailout programs, housing initiative, rescue efforts, stimulus schemes, bank takeovers, wars, unemployment benefit extensions, and, and numerous other promises, the biggest financial deception of the decade is what the United States is doing to the dollar. Nothing else even comes close. This reckless activity has spooked our foreign creditors, weakened our global standing, diluted our currency, and is punishing savers and retirees, and ultimately sets us up for a level of inflation that this country has never seen before. The great masses don't quite understand it yet, but they will. There will be no escape from the cold, and a cold hard slap in the face of citizens will receive when a high level inflation in arrives. And when it does, it will make a mockery of any opposing viewpoint. 
when this dollar crisis happens, that is when everything is going to happen. Because as soon as that basis of, of faith is lost, faith in everything is going to be lost. It does not take a majority to make a rebellion. It only takes a few determined leaders to make a sound cause. H.L. Mencken. Power will concede nothing. It must be physically taken, for that is the law. Power only will submit to a greater power. 